So welcome. Uh, what I want to do in this problem is show you how to determine, if we are given one zero, how to find the rest of our zeros. So what I have is I have a zero, and they say that zero is x equals the square root of 3. Next is they say our function is x cubed plus 2x, that's squared, minus 3x minus 3. So to solve this problem, what we've got to do is we've got to remember what exactly are the zeros going to tell us. And I'm going to kind of give you a little hint here real quick. To, um, to kind of forward on this problem. So let's say I wanted to solve the zeros for this problem right here. All right, and this is something pretty simple. What we can use is uh, we can use the square root property to solve for this. And what we'll notice by adding 4 on both sides, we get x squared equals 4. Then we square root both sides. And before I get into it, I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which we know the square root of 4 is going to be 2, right? But the main important thing is we understand is the zeros for this are going to be plus and minus. And that's something that's going to come up a lot, especially once we get into some other zeros, but um, our imaginary zeros. But the thing, important thing is if I'm given a square root as a zero, I need to understand that there is the other pair of that square root, right? Because when we introduce a square root, we're going to have the positive and the negative. So therefore, if I'm giving you this positive root, there also is going to include a negative square root. But before we can do that, so we know that it's a 0, correct? So therefore, it's if a 0, that means it's a root. It's a solution. It is um, a root. It's a solution. It is also an x-intercept. But what that means is it evenly divides. So the factor of that is going to evenly divide into that polynomial. And what we can do. Since it evenly divides into it, we can use synthetic division to prove that. So I'm going to use synthetic division. Since that is my 0, that's going to be my k. Then what I do is I take the coefficients of each one of my terms. I'm going to actually get a little bit more space. OK. So now I take the coefficients of each one of my terms of the polynomial. Remember, synthetic division, I've dropped down the first one. So I have 1 times square root of 3, which is going to be square root of 3. Then remember, vertically, you add. So 2 plus square root of 3 is 2 plus square root of 3. Now I'm going to multiply. Make sure you apply a uh, distributive property. So square root of 3 times 2 plus square root of 3. Well, 2 times square root of 3 is 2 square root of 3. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 3 squared, which is 3. Then, as I add these up, negative 3 plus 3 plus 2 square root of 3 is just going to leave me with 2 square root of 3. Square root of 3 times 2 square root of 3. I can only multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which gives me, again, 3. 3 times 2, which is 6. Negative, three, negative 6 plus 6 equals 0. Now, I knew that was going to happen, right? Because if it's a 0, it has to divide into it. So I know that those are going to be my coefficients. But the problem is. So the square root of 3 times this polynomial with these as our coefficients is going to be my other factor. And that's going to bring up some problems because I don't want to try factoring. You can, and, it's, and there's nothing wrong with it. You can factor a polynomial with one exponent, one coefficient is 1, the next coefficient is 2 plus square root of 3, and my third coefficient is going to be 2 square root of 3. And it's actually not that bad to go ahead and factor it. However, ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand that. Remember, we talked about positive square roots and also negative square roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these coefficients of my other factor, and I'm going to divide them again by my uh, conjugate pair. So then, by doing that, I'm going to get down to my linear factors. So 1 times negative square root of 3 is just going to give me a negative square root of 3, which leaves me just with a 2, which then leaves me with a 2 radical 3, which leaves me with 0 provided me with my other factor, which is going to be, remember, that's your remainder, constant, and linear. So that leaves me with x plus 2. So my factors are going to be x plus 2, x plus square root of 3, and x minus square root of 3. And then if you want to find the zeros, the zeros, when using the zero product property, are going to equal negative 2, negative square root of 3, and square root of 3. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you find all the zeros when given a radical root. Thanks.